so appreciative of everyone that's come this morning. And uh, um, I, uh, I don't really want to divulge a ton of details to you. Simply because I don't want it, I don't want it, uh, the details spread around. But I met the guy at the car wash that works over there the other day, the one that manages it, while I was walking back and forth to the house that we're tearing down. And I asked him, I said, Would you talk to your boss man to see if he, uh, if he's interested in selling us this little grassy piece up here at the end of the car wash? He said, Sure, I will. I'll, uh, I'll talk to him. And then Brother Ray and I were working over there um, one day this past week, Friday, I think it was. And uh, uh, he came over and he said, well, he don't want to sell it. And I thought, well, okay, I can understand that. He wants to sell the whole thing. Uh-huh. Now... I'm excited about it. I probably won't be as excited when I find out what he wants for it. But I'm excited to know that the Lord is making some things happen. And there's more to the story that I'm not going to share with you uh, simply because I want to make sure we get it, not somebody else. Amen? But uh, that is exciting to me. Amen. When there don't seem to be a way, the Lord can make a way. Amen? Amen? And any time you start, you start getting discouraged and you think that uh, the Lord's forgot about you, just come down here to the church and walk through it. Uh, I, uh, uh, I'm going to preach a message real soon. I, I taught it when we were still over in the other class, but, uh, and I, I referenced it last week. The Bible says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. Now, I'm going to have to probably dress it up a little bit from when I taught it over there in the other class. But great is increase, much increase is by the strength of the ox. If you want to know what peace feels like, and you want to be able to experience a complete lifting of the load... And, and you don't have a key to the church, holler at me sometime during the day when there's nobody here and there's nothing going on here. And I'll let you in. And you can sit in any seat in this entire sanctuary and feel a peace that you just can't find anywhere. Uh, there are those that have done it. You come walk around in here and pray and think about the Lord. Think about the power of the Holy Ghost. Play you some music. Uh, uh, I usually make my own called singing real loud when I'm in here by myself because I don't have to worry about anybody making fun of me. But there's peace. But when we all come together, When we all come together, and I never really realized this, when we come together, we come from all kinds of different places. And we have, some of us have been through no telling what this week, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Some of us have had trouble at home. Some of us had trouble at school. Some of us had trouble with the kids. Some of us have trouble at work. You know, some of us uh, have, uh, uh, you know, maybe the fish wasn't biting too good or something. Some of us battle sickness. And, but we, when we show up at the house of God, we bring all that stuff with us. We don't think about it. We don't realize it. But we bring all that stuff with us. This is Pentecost Sunday. It's a celebration commemorating the descent of the Holy Ghost upon the disciples of Jesus, along with over a hundred more of his followers. John the Baptist came forth preaching of the time when Jesus would baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I feel like today, as I 
I, I probably didn't quite study as much as I have because my mind has been constantly moving and moving. And I spent a couple hours here this morning and, and some time here last night. And But over the last several days, Brother David, I have just been constantly thinking and my mind churning and moving. And, and, and you know, we, we've had, had a deliverance service uh, two weeks ago. And then we had Mother's Day last week. And, and excuse me, now we have Pentecost Sunday. And, my, my mind has been just really focusing and, and, and turning and churning on, on uh, uh, what direction to go today and, and where would the Lord lead us today. And, and my mind has also been a, a whirly bird, if you will, of a, a kaleidoscope of emotions and thoughts and, and ideas and, and questions. And, and I even asked myself this morning, uh, 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 arrogantly as we do, God, what can I do to help these people? What can I do to, to help these people be able to break through and, and I have searched and, and I, have, I have prayed and I have fasted and I have thought of, of what can I do to help these people and I realize something, uh, there's absolutely nothing that I can do uh, but it's got to be up to us, uh, we've got to realize that God has something for us uh, and what he has for you today I want you to hear me right now what he has for you today is I feel that this is a day of refreshing a day for us to refocus uh, as individuals and as a church body uh, to make sure that we're keeping the main thing, the main thing uh, and that is uh, you'll bring forth the son and call his name Jesus uh, and he shall save his people from their sins. I, I was, I was, uh, uh, I, 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 I've been troubled this week, and and you excuse me for for a personal reference, but but tomorrow we we will bury a, uh, and, and I promise all this stuff is legal, but it's it's my wife's uncle, and he's my cousin, and his mother was a uh, uh, keen, and she was a sister to my to my dad's father, and we will bury uh, bury him tomorrow, and then we got the news day before yesterday that that daddy's sister had terminal cancer again, and. And I told my mama, I said, Mom, I think I, I, I want to tell my kids, don't have any kids of your own. The amount of people that have died in our family from cancer is astronomical. It would amaze you if I begin to tell you about the cousins and in-laws and outlaws that I don't even know one particular family lost every one of their children to cancer. And, and it has been down even to the third and fourth and fifth generation. But I told my mom in the same conversation as I was whining and crying before the Lord, uh, the Holy Ghost let me know uh, that the cure for cancer was administered at Calvary. Uh, the problem's not a cancer problem. The problem's not a depression problem. The problem's not a finance problem. The problem is a sin problem. But Jesus came that we might be set free from sin, that the influence of sin would have no power over us. We've got to get the main thing, the main thing, and that is Jesus came to save people. You do not have to any longer wallow around in a quagmire of self-pity and self-despair and just hoping that maybe there'll be a brighter tomorrow because I came to preach a message of a brighter today. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of hope. This is, this is the day of restoration. This is a day of refocus. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands under the Lord. A day to refocus. You know, I, I'm sure Terrence and Dana can can uh, understand the last few weeks. You know, Sister Sister Casey just graduated from college, and then the boys are graduating from high school, and we're worried about college and and one leaving the leaving the nest, so to speak, and and the end of school and programs, and and first one thing, then the other, and then funeral after funeral after funeral, and 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 it's so easy. Yesterday morning, I had I had a funeral in the morning, I had a wedding in the afternoon, had a ball game to go to in the afternoon after that and then I somehow or the other I had to find a message to preach which obviously is, is the most important part and the Holy Ghost kept working on me even at the ballpark but I realized I've got to have a time. Uh, how many of you have ever have ever been doing a project and maybe got drawn out a long way and, and then finally you just decided grab the table, wipe everything off of it, get you a clean sheet of paper a nice sharp pencil and start over
That's where we are this morning. That's where I feel like the Holy Ghost wants us to be this morning. As I thought and pondered about the significance, and I promise I'm going to preach and it's going to make sense. I, I saw it, I see it even during worship service. I've, I've seen it for weeks. I, I've started back sitting on the platform again, but I don't like it. I really like to stay down with my back to the congregation because it is a place of blissful ignorance. You're giggling and laughing. I, I don't get to see the evidence of all the stuff you've been through all week long still on your face. But the sad thing and the thing that I want to preach about this morning is, is it's, it's one thing for me to see it right now. But it's another thing for me to see it when I shake your hand as you're going out the back door. We have got to realize uh, this is a place where change takes place at. Uh, this is a place where you can be restored and refreshed and refocused. Uh, and that those that come in with a downtrodden look uh, can leave with their eyes open wide and bright uh, with hope, with faith, uh, with uh, uh, optimism that everything thing is going to be all right. As I thought and pondered, help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all need to be thankful ain't nobody in my mind with me. Because then there'd be two of us crazy and goofy as a loon. <laughs> yeah. You just think you would. Yeah. As I thought and pondered about the significance of this day. And what this day means, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It was on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was given. And, and this is a celebration of it. I was led in my thoughts to a passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians. Now I want you to keep in mind that I didn't know where the Scripture was. I didn't, it could have been in, in the Old Testament or the New Testament. I just knew the Scripture was there. So I searched for it. I've got this little app on my phone and my iPad. I can punch in the part that I know. And I searched for it. And I found it. And as I begin to read it, you're going to most likely think that I really am off track because on first glance, it seems to have nothing to do with Pentecost Sunday. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now what in the world's that got to do with Pentecost? Well, the next verse will enlighten you just a little, but I promise you as we move forward in the, the Word today, you're going to see. Verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some, this is what I was looking for, for some have not the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. It's in fact verse 34 that I was searching for. But as I, I started reading the whole chapter, and those of you that want to teach Bible studies and stuff, or maybe even preach someday, <coughs> it's very important that when you find a thought and find a scripture, you read before and after it because you want to see the context within which it was written. And this chapter is one. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, this chapter probably deals with life after death more extensively than perhaps any other chapter in the Bible. It is the attempt by Paul, and you'll see it's starting to make sense now. It is an attempt by Paul to bring the Corinthian church to a place of refreshing and refocus. Uh, it is an attempt by Paul to bring them back where they all started. Uh, and I've got to let you know one more thing. Uh, when you begin to try to refocus and, and wipe that table, that that. that that quagmire, that, uh, that uh, I'm thinking about how my homework papers used to look. And I would rip it up, wad it up, and throw it away and have a nice pretty thing. When you do that spiritually, the thing that you need to always realize and remember, that when you're going to start fresh uh, in the Spirit, uh, you always want to go back to the beginning. To the beginning, to the Word of God. I'm probably going to be looking for a few blessing lords today. 
Let me tell you something. Please, please don't get nervous. Please, please don't get nervous. Please don't get uh, uh, tied on me, please. And, and I'm not really talking about our guests and our newer folks, but I'm talking about those that have been here for quite a while. Don't don't get nervous and, and get uptight and get, get uh, you know, uh, uh, concerned that, uh, that maybe things are not going to happen like we need. We want them to happen. This ain't my church anyway. This is God's church, and, and he knows what he's doing from Jump Street. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't make any mistakes, but this is an attempt. <clears throat> this is an attempt by the Apostle Paul to bring the Corinthian church to a place of refreshing and refocus. And like I said, now it's starting to make a little sense. The first four verses of this chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, is Paul coming right out of the gate with a declaration of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and it appears that the Corinthian church, while they believed the gospel, and they obeyed the gospel, and they're still standing in the gospel, but they've gotten off track. That's quite clear when you read the entire passage that the Corinthians feel like they've already attained to the blessings of the age and the age to come. And this being a result that there's some false teachers that are around the Corinthian church that they're listening to and they've allowed to influence their life. There's some people that have come along preaching and teaching that there is no resurrection, that there is no power of the resurrection. And, and while the Corinthians have believed and obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, they, are, they have fallen under the influence of this false teaching that there's no resurrection from the dead. Now our first scripture shows Paul's concern for them and for the damage that they're flirting with by continuing to be influenced by these people. He says, be not deceived. Take me back to 33 if you can. From time to time I'm going to ask you to go back 33 and 34. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. The deception of what they're being sold was that if there's no resurrection, then the lifestyle limitations of Scripture don't apply. Basically, they were falling uh, under the premise, uh, Brother David, uh, let's eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow we... Y'all going to help me now? Y'all never heard that before? Eat and drink and be merry today because tomorrow we die. When, they, when there's no resurrection of the dead, then there is no uh, 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 emphasis or focus on our behavior now. The, the soul is just going to live forever, so we just as well enjoy what's going on in the flesh right now. And that, that philosophy of, of eat and drink and be married today because tomorrow we die had permeated their thought process uh, or was least in danger of getting in their thought process. Uh, and the most dangerous deception that Paul is warning them of uh, is the danger of continuing to rub shoulders with people that are constantly spouting false doctrine, spouting things that are not true, and believing that they will not affect you. You cannot believe that you can continue to allow yourself to be assaulted by ungodliness and immorality and things that are not true without being affected by it. Because the Bible said evil communications corrupt good manners. The purpose of this passage written not only to Corinth but also to us uh, is that continual close contact uh, with evil minded influence uh, or continual exposure to this with opinions that differ from scripture are people that are impure in their lives uh, that tends to corrupt our morals, our heart and our sentiment of others. I hope you're hearing the word of the Lord this morning. You cannot continue to allow ungodly, immoral influence into your life and stay holy before God. You have got to weed some people and some junk out of your life. You can't keep watching nasty movies. You can't keep listening to nasty music. You can't keep reading nasty books and hope to be pleasing to God. And I said it. And the Word of God backs it up. You cannot continue to be surrounded by nothing but ungodly influence and hope to be godly. And for you to think you can, you have been deceived. Please listen closely as you'll see how this is tied in to the day in which we live. Barnes Notes. Is anybody familiar with Barnes Notes commentary? 
Brother David is. Some more should be. It's free on the internet. It's commentary. He says it like this. Of the effect of ungodly influence upon those who would be godly. It's by the secret silent influence of their words and conversation and example. Listen, we have less horror at vice by becoming familiar with it. We look with less alarm on error when we hear it often expressed. Let me read that again. We have less horror at vice by becoming familiar with it. We look with less alarm on error when we hear it often expressed. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that you don't need to try to keep up with the weather and stuff. But I'm telling you, we are at the place where godly men and women need to regulate how much of the news and how much of the media you allow into your life on a regular basis. We become less watchful and cautious, Albert Barnes goes on to say, when we are constantly with the frivolous, the worldly, the unprincipled, and the vicious. Hence, Christ sought that there should be a pure society and that his people should principally seek the friendship and conversation of each other and withdraw from the world. It is in the way that Paul here refers to that Christians embrace false doctrines, that they lose their spirituality, their love of prayer, their fervor of piety and devotion to God. It is in this way that the simple are beguiled, the young corrupted, and that vice and crime and infidelity spread over the world. This is from his commentary. I forget, Albert Barnes, or Albert Barnes, I believe was his name. It was published a few years before Brother Pete was born in 1875. Five years after Albert Barnes died in 1870, it was a, a, a loud cry from the wall of the watchman that said, today's outrage will be lost in tomorrow's greater desecration of the moral fiber of our society. And what we see tomorrow will make today not seem so bad until we have wrapped ourselves completely in the ungodliness and the immorality of the world. But we must notice that the second verse of today's text says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake, that is the word literally. Notice that the book of 1 Corinthians, does anybody want to tell me who that book was written to? It was written to the church. But brother David, understand this, that that word awake, that is the exact same word that you would use to somebody that you were telling to sober up from being drunk. And the in, in, information is uh, that we have become drunk uh, on, the, on the bad things and so much stuff uh, that is constantly bombarding us uh, until we no longer know right from wrong. Uh, we no longer can tell the difference between truth and error. And all we're hoping for is to be a little bit better than what we heard today. It's literally the same word as one sobering from being drunk. It is reference to our saturation with and our desire for and the subsequent subtle change that they're in danger of experiencing due to the ungodly influence that they continue to allow into their lives. And it is a fact. And it is, in fact, a stronghold of unrighteousness from which they are instructed to break free. Remember the warning of 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. With the warning being one of awareness. But when we become deceived and we become inundated with so much, no longer are we aware. 
Here's what I was trying to say a while ago. The repugnancy of today's new revelation of moral decline causes us to view yesterday's moral decline through a cloudy lens of relativism. And maybe yesterday wasn't so bad in light of today. When in fact we are not commanded in any way to judge or grade righteousness off of where this world is headed. But we are commanded to be a peculiar nation, a people, a chosen generation, sanctified and set apart from the influence of the entire world system. You cannot pick and choose which parts of the world you want to allow into your life. But we have been commanded as Holy Ghost filled men and women to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. The world system is not in any way from God. The Bible says all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is of the world and not of God. And then he says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Do you realize we have heard so much? Uh, I'm not going to say that, but... We have heard so much uh, inappropriate things about sin. When he says, and sin not, that is, that is in direct contrast to the, the free passage of the tolerance of sin. I, I've even heard it preached in a funeral here lately when they said, and you know we're all sinners. It's a tolerance of sin that is offered by much of the religious world. It's not because they're malicious. It's not because they want to be bad. But Brother Pete, it is because most people do not realize that we have a hope where sin no longer controls us. We have a hope where we're no longer subject to the power of sin. Oh, I, I know that right now some are even thinking, well, we all sin. Everybody sins every day. First off, that's a pile of baloney. You do not have to be a sinner. The Bible has given us, it says, uh, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Uh, the Lord has given you the right direction to go in everything. Uh, and with the power of the Holy Ghost, we can do that. Boy, and I can feel the unbelief rising up in here. I hope that I, I hope I haven't been too muddy and cloudy today because I, it's about refocus. Uh, it's about getting back where we're supposed to be. And listen to me, God have mercy on us. Don't you dare say that Brother G.L. said it doesn't matter. Uh, but I can tell you that man, woman, boy, girl, or both can come to this church uh, and go to the bathroom wherever they choose because uh, all three of our bathrooms uh, is any gender bathrooms because they're just one hole or outhouses. Say, oh, look, I don't care which bathroom they go to. They all got a lock on the door. I don't care which one they go to. But let me tell you something. If the devil can keep us so wrapped up in who Target's going to allow to go to the bathroom and we forget that the Lord came to seek and save that which was lost, we can't get so concerned about determining who goes where to go to the bathroom. We've got to make sure we're staying concerned about who goes to an altar of repentance. Say, I don't like it any more than you do. I think it's hogwash. It makes me mad and it makes me angry that somebody can enforce their own personal idea on me as a law. But I'm going to tell you, we got to stop shaking our head and start lifting our head. Because the Bible says, when you see these things come to pass, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. We were never meant to control the world. We were never meant for this to be our kingdom. We are not of this world and our kingdom's not of this world. No, we don't have to lie down and roll over and let ourselves be tromped on and, and the, the tenets upon which we were built be tromped on, but neither can we lay back and cover our head up and say, oh, woe is me, when we've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Give me Romans chapter number... Six. It's the word of God. Sin, you do not have to serve sin. I'm going to say that one more time. You do not have to serve sin. For many people, they use that everybody's a sinner as a license to keep on doing what they want to do. 
and say, well, I'm just weak and everybody's a sinner and nobody's perfect. Oh, I, I agree nobody's perfect, but I'm trying. We're instructed to try to be perfect rather than try to be like everybody else. But God be thanked. 